Oh my gosh, it's 322. I turned around to see what it was. It's like 322. I think yesterday I started it was um, 32. I don't know. It seemed like it was similar kind of numbers. I don't know. I'd have to go back and check the footage. Um, my tea's way too hot. Yep. Um, but I don't know. I was regularly getting up at 1 something in the morning. I think it was like 145 or whatever. Um, but I was laying in my bed, just tossing and turning, tossing and turning, tossing and turning, and just being like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable. What the fuck? But I still feel so tired. It's weird. I have never been so tired and slept so much in my whole life. I am not even shitting you. <laughs> I think it was like a couple weeks ago or so. I think I've said it a few times where it was like, I would just like to, um, is it Rumpelstiltskin? The one who slept through everything, the... I can't think of his name, but it seems like I said Rumple Still. I'd like to Rumple Still skin this, and then somebody said no Rumple Still skin was blah blah blah. But I can't remember. But I always think of him as being the one who wanted to sleep for a hundred years or whatever. And so um, all this sleeping—it's weird, but it makes me feel like that that's like we're drugged or something. Is it's so strange. And then when I go out, and it's even is weirder, is where it's like an energetic thing too. Because when I walk out of my gate, it is like I walk out of a portal or something. Like we don't realize we are there, these energetic things, like these portals and stuff. These are energetic spaces or whatever uh, you want to call it. It's like, I, like how I see it. I always see it like a honeycomb kind of thing, you know? And that is even where they've been putting it together, these lines or something, these scientists trying to figure out this color spectrum. That's how they figured out were holograms and whatnot. But um, but they're these color spectrum things or whatever. Oh, and my joints hurt so fucking bad. Oh my God, my hands have been... I couldn't crochet for shit right now. I don't know what the hell is the... Uh, my uh, toes too it's oh, so painful I don't know what in the hell I'm so sick of this shit and uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of things I want to say so uh, that's why I'm doing this <laughs> um, so uh, just kind of go all over the place as usual um, so uh, okay so when I got up uh, I felt tired still, but I, I just couldn't get comfortable. It, everything is hurting. And so um, and then Stella started squirming around. So then I was like, well, I'll get up and go out there with you. And so um, I come out here because I wanted to see what time it was. Because it was like, fuck, my will just get up. And um, I, and I was like, 140. Or it might have even been earlier. I don't know. Um, and... And then I was like, it could have been 120-something. I don't know. And then I was like, I, um, I'm just going to lay down then on the couch. I'm going to go back to sleep for a while. And then um, I think I got my phone. I think I got a joint, and I was like a little smoke. See if I can go back to sleep because for the pain. That's what I was trying to say yesterday, too, is I think that, um, you know, there there's a thing about weed because it's been used for so long for people trying to escape and um, used it for partying and stuff like that. But I think when it goes more into its real uses and not its abuses, kind of, you know, it, it's, it will go into its rightful place. <laughs> but it does, uh, you know, when you have pain, I've tried to tell my mom, tried to tell my mom, I've told her to tell her friends and stuff. It is natural. Yeah, you cough, but um, obviously there's toxins to cough out. So it's good to cough them out because that's the stuff that's giving people cancer and all this problems in their lungs. It's this shit. It's shit sitting in there. This environmental, I don't know, <coughs> space dust is, uh, is something I think they call it in the <coughs> science magazines or whatever. Uh, it's made up of a whole bunch of stuff, but they put the the micro nanos or whatever in it, uh, so we breathe that shit in. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I feel like is in my face. I feel like there's something that happens that stimulates them or something. And I think it's like something with the frequency. But, um, um, I think I, I'm just going to skip her. I'm just going to go with it. I'm not going to try and hold that. So, so then, uh, because I was going to try and go back and try and see if I fix, if I had finished talking about one thing, it's like, oh, I'm not going to go and try and figure that out. I'm just going to keep on going. So, um, uh, I had been, um, when I got up, I was laying there and I was, uh, so I decided to look on TikTok or something and see, you know, I go on and check my YouTube, check that first always and see, um, you know, if there's comments or something and, and then I'll talk. That's always, I don't know. That's my priority. <laughs> it has been for a long time. Um, so in TikTok, that's even my 2.0. TikTok has failed me. Like I don't, I don't have as much loyalty to them as I do to YouTube. And as so, um, the TikTok thing, uh, I went on there to look and see, and it's just I haven't, I didn't even do any for the last couple of days. It's so chaotic when you go on there. It is the weirdest energy. It is. Uh, I, it's very chaotic, which really shows to me where we're at. And so we're, to me, we're really at that boiling point, you know, that this, it's, it's like right at the right point. It can't, it can't go past, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's chaotic. Like the reason I'm saying that is because I'm seeing candy me being made for some reason. So it's showing me like about the temperature and how it boils. Cause when you're making candy and sugar, it's all so, it, there's like these perfect moments. You can't go past certain things or you change the whole like texture of the, of the candy. And, and so it's like this. So that anyways, that's why if I'm making references that seem strange, it's cause that's the visual that I'm seeing. But I understand what it is that they're saying from the visual. And so it is like, it is this reading all the time, but all the things are already set. It's like, it all is the perspective. It's all in the perspective of how you're watching this play out, you know? And it, and it's, it's trippy because there's so many different perspectives. There's so many different places yeah it's kind of like okay this visual is kind of like you know inside of a uh that swirl that natural kind of swirl like it's inside of like shells and stuff and you see that swirl going up but then all of the patterns in it are windows and all the windows are our different faces so uh, you can the what ever how that visual means to you but that's what I mean is when they give you them you can understand what they're saying it's a weird a very weird language that it is you know where you have to learn to uh decipher it's it's uh it's very much about code reading but it, you have feelings that go with it so you have feelings, it's like, it's, it's complex, but, um, you know, it's something that you, you learn. So with, if you're getting images in your head and you're just confused, it's probably you're opening up to your, your communication and yeah, it can be confusing, you know, when you're trying to understand and stuff, but you just, the more you relax into things, it's like you put up a guard when you you put up a guard, which keeps you from seeing, but the more you relax and you just kind of relax into things, the more things happen naturally. It's just like this fighting, uh, fighting things kind of this, you know, putting up a guard and trying to force things all the time the, in life kind of is how people kind of approach it through how their whole mind and everything 
So, um, anyways, um, you know, when I got up and I was looking at some of them, I had seen a couple things that I was like, oh, um, you know, I think those is really good signs. We've got a lot of good signs, I think. A lot of really good signs. And, um, uh, but then I was, um, uh, I, I, and then I just put my phone down after a few minutes or whatever. Because there was a couple of things I saw, uh, I thought were really interesting. I'll have to think of what they were, though. But anyways, I put my phone down, and so I decided I was going to just lay there and try and go back to sleep. But it's impossible. It's like, it just is impossible. It's like, I, I don't know. It's like, once you open the conversation up with them, once they're in there talking, once you've started listening, it's kind of like it's trippy. Think about this. is like when you're laying there, like this has happened a lot recently, laying there asleep on the couch, and all of a sudden you come conscious into the room and you realize how loud the room is. And and before that, you know, you didn't hear anything. And so it's it's kind of like that same kind of thing. It's just this weird, I don't know, weird states of consciousness or something or weird. It is kind of like a... It is how it, it always gets shown to me is this it whatever we're paying attention to so it's whatever we're paying attention to is the reality that's that is what your focus is that's what your conscious is focused on that reality then it has more things going on and so it can be pulled out of that reality but in this one that we're in see you can't because we are, this whole thing about being birthed into it and it, and it having a whole thing. Uh, like you can go in dreams and you can go from reality to reality to reality. And it can seem so real. And then you can come into this reality and it seems like the same realness as the other realities. and But you can't get out of it. You can't leave it. You can't, you know, even people who think, well, I'm just going to kill myself. I'm going to get out of it. I'll kill myself. So many people do that and it doesn't work. The only way it can work is if it's meant to work. It is If it's your way, if it was the, always the way you were going to go. You can't trick the universe. You can't trick yourself. It's Things are set. And so, you know, even if we try and get out and it's not time, there's other lessons. There's reasons why people take their own way out and stuff. There's like so much more about our lessons and about the vastness, about what we're understanding and growing and stuff. And it's, and it isn't, um, it isn't like a punishment or something. It feels so much like a punishment to people and a prison and stuff. It is, you know, it is a kind of, a prison because we can't just leave like I mean but think about it think about how many times through your life you would have just left book I would have so many times so many times I would have from the time I was a kid I was fucking telling him get me the fuck out of here give me the fuck out of and I I I rode hard man when I was young I I'm telling you, we walk into a room with a handful of pills and said, hey, who wants some? I, uh, yeah, I didn't never think about consequences. I did so much dangerous stuff. I was always out just uh, go, go, go. And, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't have a lot of parenting over me or something. I was like a, a wild child. And so, you know, and I didn't like myself and I didn't feel good about myself. So, uh, you know, I just was, just, and I had myself in problems all the time, being used and abused by people. And so, you know, that just beats you down worse. When you don't have good self-esteem and you don't feel good about yourself, you just beat yourself down worse and worse. And you don't realize that you're doing it. See, that's the switching timelines. 
it's leaving that you know beat down part of you behind and picking them up and going and cleaning them up and you know going out in a different way uh but anyways um you know uh i don't remember why i was talking about that but uh oh because uh you can't leave before your time yeah i was i was constantly telling you know, just get me out of here. What the fuck? I've done that so much just over recent years, just when I was out on my dark night. Like, I, I've had it so many times where it was just like, get me the fuck out of here. Fuck, I want out of this fucking game. I want out of this. This is bullshit. Uh, so I just think, you know, if it was up to us, we would, we would fucking tap out all the time. Every time something got hard, we'd tap out. Get me the fuck out. So it, uh, there has to be that added thing where, no, you can tap out all you want, but no, you're stuck there to finish your, you're there for your completion. And it's not one that someone made up for us. We did it. We made it up for ourselves. Like I'm constantly thinking, who the hell you think you are, Kelly? <laughs> like, Where do you think putting yourself through this? Like, oh my gosh, there's a, so many things, you know, and I was like, questioning you know the bigger aspect of myself the ego the you know whatever it is you know it's like i don't shame god and you know the creator of everything is out here trying to ruin this one little speck of dust over here like i don't look at it like that i i know that we are uh the creators of our own universe we're the creators of our own reality and <clears throat> and how much that they have showed me, you know, it is our, our focus is our reality. And, um, uh, and it's like on this micro macro in this experience, because it's how you can focus, how, where you can put your energy, how you can focus your energy. But yeah, so when, when I leave, so your energy and this is trippy because I think this is the problem from one of the problems like in the cities is where I was saying about how you, the people's energy, especially because there's so much dark energy that it's, and it's interfering and it's becoming like a blob. It's becoming its own entity of big dark energy and they're all feeding it and it's feeding them. It's this parasitic relationship that has developed that it was all uh, built on pain and fear, suffering, uh, trauma, drama, you know, that feeling of never being able to move ahead, the stagnation is held back, the chains that bind you. And the, the chains that bind us are always up in here, but those are, feel like the strongest chains that there are. But so that energy that they've created that is going in these condensed places where there's a highly populated areas. And so here where I'm at, you know, it's not. So I've been able to recognize a lot of things about energy and about our energy and stuff and about how, you know, like I could he I can hear people's thoughts and stuff. Like you can feel people's energy. Like it's, it's, I, if you, if you're in a highly condensed place, even an apartment building, even living in a home where there's five or six people in it, anywhere where there's other energies besides yours, that there's interactions that are happening in, in the energy field. And so, um, and you know, and the more we, evolve the more that we will understand about our energy and how you know i i've been i feel learning about it while i've been here <laughs> like this stuff like the chi and stuff like all this stuff that they had been showing me and doing and then um you know understanding that that's building your energy that's like you know you're building up uh you know making your energy bigger which you wouldn't want to do if you were really uh, building up sad energy when you have, are sad and you want to build it into good you got to turn on really happy music get the lights different uh, you know put on happy things get the energy building is happy energy 
You know, that's the energy you want to bring and bring it happy. And then you um, start feeding into that energy and, you know, jumping up, being silly. Or, you know, go back to being when you were a little kid, you know, run around, jump on the furniture, run and do things that you would have gotten in trouble for. Do things that just set you free and you will find freedom in setting yourself free of allowing yourself to be yourself because the yourself that you built up that you thought was the grown up adult was really just the indoctrinated slave self. It's going to make me cry. That's so sad. Because um, all the people, you know, they become a, this adult version of themselves. And they lose the essence of themselves. To make the acceptable version that is the hard work, a responsible, successful version. And they, um, they hide their true self, their true nature. <sighs> Anyways, back to, so, uh, oh, I had noticed is, um, leaving my driveway, like walking out into the road. It re was reminding me of when I was doing these, all this driving where I would leave one freeway and enter another. And it was like, oh my God, this isn't like an entire another reality. It's an entire another energy. This is a whole nother portal of energy happening here that is separate from this one. And so when I walked out of the driveway and noticed that just walking and entering the road, it was like I walked out and the energy changed. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so trippy. And, um, and that is one thing, too, that I think is kind of tiring is um, it is the energy movement. It is, um, it's like the way the energy is moving is like some of us, we're, we're moving different than the energy. And that's why, like, to me, I keep feeling like it's like quicksand or something. Like, I'm not moving right. And it's weird, too, is like when you think about like where they those aliens and the footage of people in other dimensions, how they move weird. Like, I don't think I'm moving all jerky and creepy, but it feels heavy. Like, I feel like I'm moving weird or something. Or all of a sudden, I'll feel like it's like, like I'm a ghost. Like, there's nothing holding me. It's weird. So, those, um, you know, and I don't know if you would everybody would notice those things or if everybody even noticed something, how they would perceive it. So uh, I that's why I think it's helpful when some of us come out and we talk about our experience because it helps the, the others of us be able to try and uh, put pieces together in our own mind of what's happening to ourselves. And so, and you could think, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, it's like that. And then you could be thinking that for months and all of a sudden you hear someone else explain it in a different way. And it's like, oh, that, that is exactly what is happening. That makes so, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, an ever expanding, uh, an opening. That's why I don't get stuck. There's some of these people who just get stuck. Like it's kind of a shame. All these people who uh, started opening themselves up spiritually, but then they just went so into ego and, you know, uh, be, be decided to be the leaders. And because um, they're missing out on all these great opportunities for growth. As I, I see, <laughs> so many are not. Like, it was just a new refresh your hair color that just went out across the airwaves. And they all went and put this new color on. It's like, oh my goodness. And then, um <sighs> Then, um, just the things that I'll see, like their reactions and stuff, you know, some of these sp spiritual leader people, their reactions to things and stuff where I just feel like they're not, uh, healing themselves. They're not looking at things right. They're not, uh, you know, they're just, 
but it will all be revealed. You know, uh, I it's just something I'm witnessing, it's something I'm seeing. Uh, you know, as this goes through, it, just how many people who think they're awake who aren't awake. It's just it's so trippy, but it's so much of, and it and it's so much of that that shell that that thing inside the whatever it's called that turny swirly thing with all of that pattern but all of the openings are all of our faces it's all of our perspectives it is all of a you know that's what is the creation of everything and so it is our perspective is what gives it life without your perspective it would have no existence it relies on your perspective so you shouldn't be giving your perspective away in the, at letting others contort your perspective. The more you pull into your own perspective, but even the contorted perspective is a perspective. It has a, a valid, a valid, important part too, because all perspectives do, because that perspective has a certain frame it has a unique frame to encompass it as a, an experience in itself. So, um, so see, the, we're, there's nothing ever you're doing wrong. You're, you're never doing anything wrong. It's all of this constant evolving. It's this constant just movement. It is this, it, it's just this movement and this connection how everything is connected, but it is all of that movement. But see that movement that goes, the flow, it, 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 there is energetic storms. And like this is like an energetic disease. And, and then you can see how the micro macro, how as the people play it out, how the disease continues to, to stick them. They stay stuck. And uh, it's weird because for people, you know, who um, like me that can see more, uh, I think that, um, you know, that, that, that there's definitely that's a gradation as well is how far out. Like, I'm sure there's people past me who can see more or beyond what I can see. It's just this gradation of view of being able to see, but it is, um, it's just, it's, it's very trippy. You know, the, the, what you, what you see and what you witness and what you experience is, um, it is all, it's also valid and so important. And I, I, that does take a lot of, uh, you know, to, to understand your importance you know, it is a lot to feel uh, value when you haven't felt loved. So it's uh, it's just a difficult thing for people to uh, like overcome, to step over. It is like stepping through a portal, going through a doorway. It is like going through doorways to yourself, though. It's it's trippy as I have experienced that too. That is, it is um, it is cool. And I don't know how to explain it, but they just all go through stuff, and it's like you are entering, you're entering the door to yourself, and it's um, but it is this as you go through the connecting to yourself, you know, letting go of all of these false representations of yourself, these fake parts of yourself. Um, one of the things I had seen, um, I just saw a few things about Trump. One of the things I saw that um, was he did a speech and he was talking about, you know, his first term or whatever. And he was talking about his second term, which is, you know, going on presently that is being destroyed that, you know, all the stuff that's going on, he's not, how, he's not claiming any of the stuff that's gone on in his second term. Like, <laughs> I just love the way he talks and stuff. 
um, because, you know, you, you have to know, like, this is his literal second term. And then when they're going in and now they're, they're going after his family, they're taking down the Trump name, they're doing all of this, taking away his licensing and all this stuff because he's so corrupt. And all at the same time, we've got jo Joe's uh, corrupt uh, trials going on. He's, I don't know, he's got impeachment call. I don't even know. There's so much going on with his uh, corruption. And uh, so, uh, but they got to, you know, do all this stuff to Trump. And, uh, you know, and that's what, I think that they watch that too. Watch our reactions. Watch how the people are talking about it. And, um, you know, there's people, uh, you know, I don't know if I mean, one of them is this guy, Harry, who all of these people say he's paid. And he's always out there trying to say, um, you know, bad stuff about Trump and, uh, Republicans. I don't know. He's just one of these. And he's really young too. He doesn't even look like he's ever voted. It's just, it's absurd. This whole, all this the absurdity of all this stuff. It's just, it's so absurd. Like, this is like, if we're in a movie, this is like a B movie. I swear to God. It's so B movie. It's so, um, it's just absurd. And, um, so, you know, they're going after him and all that stuff, but this is what they have done when they've taken over all these other countries. They go in and, you know, like what they did to Gaddafi and stuff. And they go in and they destroy these people, they'll kill them. They'll, and here, they're trying to destroy his reputation, take everything he owns and stuff. So it's like this big, you know, show. It, it, but uh, anyways, it's a show. And it's all to lead us to the really understand the corruption, that the destruction and corruption, and who's really running this show and stuff. So it's all to uh, to lead us into you know the the awareness of what is real and what isn't real. But um, anyways, it seems like it's getting so much closer and so much closer because. It, it, they've got to be getting this stuff done. Because uh, one of the things, so I saw a couple of things on the Nassara thing. And so, and all these different people, but they could all be getting their information from the same source. And so, even if they're all saying these same dates, you know, I don't know where, all, you know, where they're all getting their information. I know that there's something about this Republic newspaper thing or something that's supposed to be a military newspaper and there's certain publications or something that talk about uh the quantum and confirmation and the sara <laughs> confirmation all that stuff um so anyways but they're, they're saying this date thing so they're saying it already is going the quantum thing already started and it's already going, so they can't do any more fraud on our accounts. So that our accounts are solid. So whatever money it shows in your account was whatever money you had before. It's like they're giving you tokens or something for your money. Because uh, money won't exist anymore. So it's it's some other kind of token system or something. And uh, so then um, the first... Um, is when the banks go, it, all the banks have to change over. They don't have any other thing. It, that, that's the deadline, 10-1. They have to, they'll, they'll become financial institutions. They won't be banks anymore. It's going to be where you go to do your financial planning. They help you with um, understanding your money and stuff like that help you with stuff like that. So they'll be there until we don't need them, I would assume, you know, and then they'll close them down. But for now, they're going to be there for a part of this transition. So that is supposed to start 10-1, which is two days from now. It's, um, I was looking on the calendar. So some of this stuff should go on Sunday, but Monday is when, you know, we should see stuff. But they're saying that 10-4 probably the reason that they're trying to create all this fear because it makes it makes no sense well in two weeks <laughs> we're gonna blast you guys what do you think about that in two weeks you guys got two weeks what do you think about that like it makes no sense like they don't warn us they want to blast us they just blast us 
They're not going to give us, you know, this whole big warning. That is to create fear. It's to create drama. And so that's what they got. And so then they got all these people who are going to turn their phones off. But then you have all these other people saying, it doesn't matter if you turn your phone off. It's still going to do it. They, your phone is still going to give you this emergency signal thing. Because it's meant to override your phone even if your phone's off. So there's nothing you can do to stop the signal um, from coming in. And so I don't know, um, you know, all of that business, but that's what all those people are talking about. But then the other people who are the Nistara people, they're saying that that uh, for them to create so much fear in regards to this signal, it seems they don't want you to get this signal. They don't want you to get it. And so they want you to turn your phones off and not get it. So if they don't want you to get it, it's something good. And so it probably has to do with the money because there's that whole thing by like 1010 or 108 that we're going to be called to the redemption center. So if all that stuff is still on track, like these numbers are still the numbers that they're saying, they're still saying this is all going. And this is the same dates I've heard for a while was about this time so um about um september and october or something like it what it started going in they started putting it in and then they had to find all of the different problems in the banks all the different loopholes the different uh, they, i guess when they would first started starting it they would find so much corruption that they'd have to go in and do all of this stuff and you know but that money all of a sudden went back in my account and I had left a message for the bank girl and nothing happened that day and then the next day I was back in so she could have put it back in but uh, you know I don't know it's gonna be no they're not gonna have the things to hide their corruption in anymore everything is in the open they don't have their uh they had like places to be covered up or something like they could hide their their shit and they can't anymore i mean even all through the judicial and the criminals and all those stuff and they can't anymore so everything keeps being exposed 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 oh a weird thing too is that, so in arizona there's all this weird stuff going about with the governor and and then all these people are like, oh, she stepped down and she's out. And they all got so excited. And then they was like, no, she only stepped down for an hour. And now she's back. And then they're talking about, well, for that hour, it was supposed to be because she did something wrong. And Joe's there. Joe's been there for weeks. And then Joe left. And now Joe's back. And then all of a sudden, she's stepping down. Like, there are people in Arizona are saying there's a lot of weird, shady shit going on in Arizona. And, um... I think I just saw a thing, too, where Trump's had it over there. He would be going to expose the shady shit. And, I mean, obviously, the person isn't really Joe anyways. I mean, it's the uh, whoever's playing him to show this. But I would think it is, um, is going to have a lot of stuff about the traffic, the corruption. The, oh, it's, I bet there's going to be stuff about the cartel. All sorts of stuff is going to come out, I bet, on this. And who knows? Maybe this is what's going to be the rest something's got to go especially if we're getting this close to the nasara thing it is it got to go just like with trump coming up there and saying that i'm not all this stuff that has gone on is under that other even though it was under one his his uh time trump's time uh, he is saying you know all this stuff is the other guy so that is what it's always been. The money thing has to go into the other guy. So I don't know how this is all going to go. But the money thing is saying that it's, they're pushed on the dates. They do it like it's going. And, um, and then I was like, well, I mean, that would be really cool if it was a positive thing. You know, if it was a positive thing that woke everybody up, you know, and it was something that was a good thing. And maybe, you know, all of a sudden they do it backwards. You know, and Trump comes up and pushes this direction and knocks them all down and exposes it. And then, you know, we're all have got money instead of it going the other direction. So it could, 
it could go as a positive thing and the money go down and then, you know, they come in and arrest Joe and Trump shows that he was working behind the scenes the whole time, taking him down and doing, you know, I mean, it was, I don't know, it's very B movie, <laughs> I swear to God. So it's hard to say what in the hell is going to happen, but I think some shit is going to happen and they're going to, as long as they can fight, they'll fight. This one person I heard, and I heard this, this is the second time I heard this, where they said that they're not spraying us with chemicals anymore. That, that what they're spraying now is stuff that is trying to deactivate the toxins that are up there. And so, I don't know, they keep filling the sky full of clouds, that's for sure. And I keep getting sick, Stella keeps getting sick, but is it the, the junk that's up there that's coming down that was always going to get us sick? And they're trying to stop it because it was going to get us sicker? And I don't know. And um, and this person was saying that the 5G thing was all made up. That that never, they never turned those on. I know that those, that there has been some frequency. Like I can, I can hear it. I can hear it. I can feel it. And it, it changes all the time. So they're definitely using some frequency. And they would have to be using towers. But whatever degree or numbers and stuff, like I don't know what the numbers are. But they're definitely using frequency on us and I still feel like the frequencies are still going I still feel like that I mean they they could still do that as a, a new key EMF or EMP or whatever it's called uh have that happen you know that because uh, I I feel certain they're still doing stuff with the frequency people are still getting sick people are still dying you know I mean all of us who are all about this you know this changeover, no, like we're going into something good. You know, we want it to hurry up and be, but there's still bad things happening. And uh, lots of bad things. Uh, you know, lots of sad, tragic things, man. And um, one thing, though, I was thinking about this morning. I heard Trump saying that. And it made me start thinking about this. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like that there's like hidden code kind of in some things because they just don't make sense and this is one that just doesn't make sense because it was something you know with trump and it made me think about uh on twitter when i was first on twitter and jim carrey was on twitter and because now he's not on twitter but when he was on twitter him and i were both on twitter at the same time during this i don't i think he was on it way longer but during this period of time when all this stuff was going in 2020 and, um, you know, I, I think it was 2019 too. 2020 was like all of a sudden seen it. So it was 2019. It could have been even 2018. So it was during Trump's presidency. If you were on Twitter, then you would see, well, I mean, if you followed him, then you would see, uh, his artwork. So he did during Trump's presidency, he did the, um, like these cartoon drawings of, um, you know, like making fun of Trump and his administration. Everybody who had anything to do with Trump, he would do these drawings and make them look stupid. And, um, uh, you know, there were just these comical, I don't know, drawings to outlet your anger over what was going on kind of thing. And then they really took off. And he started being called like the political artist and even did an art show and they were selling his little drawings and, um, you know, he was getting a lot of attention. He was going on all these different shows during that time. I would guess it must have been for his TV show Kidding or something because he was on shows all the time. But he always wanted to talk smack on Trump all the time. Just wanted to talk shit on Trump. And so... Um, he was making a big, big thing of how much he didn't like Trump, making a huge thing and just talking all this about how horrible he was. And, all. Um, and so then once that switched over to the other guy, it, all of a sudden he was like, he had nothing to say anymore. He didn't really have anything to say. And then I don't remember what it was because something and he left uh, Twitter and maybe it was something with Elon or something. I don't know. I've been off Twitter so long. I don't know the drama that continued after that. 
I just remembered the part where he would put up these drawings all the time and um, people would love his drawings and stuff and how it just really blew up. And, um, and then they, you know, were talking about he was a political artist and stuff and, you know, and he seemed like he was really excited to be accepted as a artist, um, you know, cause it was, you know, he liked doing art. And so he, um, but it was just weird how all of a sudden then it just switched and he didn't do any, he didn't say anything, but what just gets weirder and weirder now at this point is how many fucking weirdo characters in this administration and to just be silence. And so I thought, I wonder if that is to kind of show that, you know, we're not allowed to speak about certain people. Like we were not allowed to talk about them. Like he could, he could throw down on Trump. Like he could say anything. Like, I mean, it was, some of this stuff was so extremely rude extremely rude and people would cheer or, you know they'd be all excited and so that like showed that side of humanity but it also showed an acceptance of this really hateful bullying but then all of a sudden when all of this stuff that's going on now and to just say nothing not a, not a goddamn drawing nothing I, I i was like you know there's no way he supports this stuff like I know he doesn't support it because uh, just the stuff that he would talk about when he would talk about Trump. And um, so, I, you know, but for their mouths to be held, for them to not get to speak up against, you know, it's basically like the people who write their paychecks, the people who run this world, who are the creating the idols, who pay the celebrities to be out there. And, um, and, and also is, you know, how many of them are, you know, they're, they're just going silent because they're not going to follow the narrative. Like they are expected to go out. If they're going to have a, a, an opportunity to speak, they better say what they're told to say. And if they don't, that they're just silenced. And so, um, you know, I thought that's interesting too because there's this, it's this extreme silence about it that is just it was like one from one jump to another it doesn't make any sense and so if some doesn't make any sense I gotta think about it and so then I was thinking um and also I think there must be a lot of people looking up about him as Joe Biden because I uh, keep having these in the shorts thing in the YouTube he keeps showing um, shorts of him as Joe Biden. And so um, I watched a couple of them. And uh, I, was, I was like, he was making fun of Joe. He wasn't trying to make Joe out to be like a good guy. So that, again, doesn't make any sense why he wouldn't be making fun of him with his drawings. Unless he's not allowed to. Um, you know, unless that's dangerous to do, you can make fun of this other guy because he's not going to do shit. But this other guy, you know, he, he would be snuffed. So, I, you know, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. And then when, um, you know, all these videos to be coming up with um, him in the shorts thing, then I was like uh, playing Joe and, uh, you know, he looked kind of like him or whatever. Um, but you know, the Joe that we have now is a mask. So they all look the same. They don't put makeup on them. They just put this mask. They probably all have their own masks. How many ever of uh, the people are playing him? And, um, it, it's more like you got to kind of recognize their like body style or their hands. But, you know, I mean, we don't know what all these different actors hands. How would we know everybody's hands? Or you can kind of uh, like watch for mannerisms and stuff but the one actor who's supposed to be playing him that's on the imdb even i think he's a british actor or something i don't know maybe he's a old guy maybe he's an old guy um but i i'm sure that they have a bunch of different ones i think they've had a bunch of different ones in different places at the same time just to try and get people to wake up it's like when you're when you're watching this stuff, it's been very extreme. There's been such wacky stuff, such crazy things 
you know, and it is waking people up. That is for sure. People are waking up. And that is the whole point of it. The whole point of it is waking us up. But, you know, we have to, the things that we have to be woken up to are pretty extreme. And we have to also wake up in a timely manner due to, you know, we're at a um, pivotal time on the planet's uh, cycles. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's a rolling over. It's that time of the night where she's ready to roll over. And so, you know, it's going to bring in and expose all this new fresh soil to us, all this new fresh land to start over. But I, that's the thing is like, I don't know, you know, uh, what all, what all we're going to be like. Like I see it as we're going to kind of have, um, like live more like little farms and stuff. We're not going to be jam packed in because it really is this, this energy thing. Like I really think like even where I'm at, um, in my neighbors are, you know, there's distance, like we're definitely not sharing hallways, like in apartments and stuff, you know, our houses are still far enough apart. Like we can't reach out and touch each other, but, um, energetically, it still feels like it's too, it's too close. It's too compacted. You know, I can still feel when those people are over there getting mad and angry and it's intense when you start feeling other people's anger, you know? And, um, so I, I do think that we're going to go and spread out more. I, I just don't think we're going to stay all jam packed. I think they're going to give us land to spread out more because I think that they know the benefits to spreading out more. But also that doesn't mean, you know, uh, having a family at all, like even a, a overextended larger family in a, a one unit or whatever. But, uh, but see, there's going to be just more space. People are just not going to be on top of each other. Things are going to just change on so many things. So much on tension and stuff. Hold on. Ah, oh, that's a perfect temperature. Um, so all of, so like if you had, you know, grandma who needs to go into a home because, you know, she can't take care, care of her own self in a house and you don't have room for, her, then you'll have room. You'll have room to put, you know, however you want to do it. You could put a little barn house out there. You could put a little trailer house out there. Like there's going to be, and, it, and things are, the people's priorities, because there's going to be so much loss. People are going to not want more loss. They're going to want to come together. And it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be so much better because people are going to care. People are going to feel so much more love towards each other. So much more appreciation because something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. And I, I just, it seems like, I mean, because they're constantly, constantly being, has been tons and tons of things that keep happening and happening and happening. It all brings people into, you know, these traumas to help bring up all of this old pain and get them into other positions, get them to see where they hold themselves back. It's just, it's a, it's a huge fluid moment that is happening in all these different people's lives all at the same time. Um, but, um, and I was weird. It felt like, um, like my brain flipped over or something. Oh, hold on. That was weird. I have some of the weirdest things happen inside of me where I'm like, what in the hell is happening? And it just really weirds me out is when it's like, we're not even fucking real. Like what in the hell? That just is what gets me so much. Is we're a hologram. We don't need to eat. We don't, I mean, do we need to sleep? Like uh, how many of these things are things that they told us are things that we need? We don't even know what the things are that we need. Like, I, I don't know. Do our, do we need to, un, uh, do, do we need to plug in the avatar at night so we can rest to fulfill us the next day? I don't know. 
but I, I, I certainly know that, you know, I, we don't need to do the things that are flesh and blood, what we've been told, you know, and you can see like eating three times a day has turned people into double the size that they would have been. Like we don't obviously need to eat that much. And then when I, you know, you watch the videos on the cooking, people go extreme. Like they don't want to just eat. They want to eat. Like, fuck. Some of these recipes that I see people make, it's like, fuck. Take take this cake box, put that cake box in, then put two bars of cream cheese in, then put a bag of chocolate chips in, then get this other bag cookie mix and put that in it's like throw some marshmallows cut some nuts cook some caramel put that on the top it's like boy we're gonna just go in full on in and this heart attack <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try and get one right out of this but you know you gotta enjoy life too you can't just hold yourself back but it's you know you gotta find balance you can't just eat like that all the time like if you do you're gonna be i don't know four times your natural size i guess And be uncomfortable and stuff. It's weird how we're not flesh and blood, but our bodies respond to our out of controlness, to us not caring for ourselves. Our body's always representing, it's always showing the side of ourselves. See how the physicality represents it shows. It shows in a in a physical form. So you are gaining a bunch of weight. What you're really, your your body showing you is you're out of balance, that something's off, that you are going out of, out of, um, you're leaning too far into something. <clears throat> so you have to reel it back in. You have to register what you're doing and recognize, and then you have to make changes to accommodate, you know, whatever's going wrong. And so, uh, but you know, that has been a whole thing. You know, the diet industry, the food, obesity, uh, the love yourself, uh, toxic skinniness or whatever. How they turned being healthy into a toxic way to live. Like, if you care about what you look like, then you are toxic. If you care about your health, you're toxic. You know, all that stuff. Um, it's so ingrained into people's minds, especially the people who have extreme obesity. They kind of rely on that factor of acceptance. Like, you better accept me, or otherwise you are, something's wrong with you. And the whole thing is, is like, you got to accept yourself, but why, why aren't you loving yourself? Because if you loved yourself, you would be treating yourself differently. That's the, that's the thing. That's the thing that they don't see. They're trying to push. I'm going to hate myself so much, but you know, you better like me. But I hate myself, but you better like me. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter how I feel about you. It's not going to affect how you feel about you. Because you don't even know me. So, if, however I feel about you, it, how would it even affect you? People put so much of how their emotional fragility over off onto somebody else. As I just saw, this this is one thing too on TikTok. Like, it's extreme <laughs> with the, the stitches. And I am not even shitting you. It is stitch... People stitching stitches that are stitched and stitching those. It's like you're watching it. What suddenly switches? Suddenly switches? It suddenly switches? It's like I'm like, am I moving my thing or something? This is weird. But it's all these people who are just like I don't know, arguing with each other through stitch or just trying to say what they think is the right thing or I don't I don't even know. It's waggy. Hold on. <clears throat> because they, um, um, uh, the, this one that I had just seen. And I think that the guy who was stitching her, 
he made a, lot of, a good points, you know. I think it's important. It needs to be said. It's just the aggra aggressive manner that people keep saying it. It's like, why does everybody got to be so confrontational to people? Like, I may talk about people on here, uh, things that I see. Like, I still, I'm like, I mean, it almost, uh, I'm having a hard time with this one girl. And it probably is because I recognize myself in her, this um, desperation for men's attention. You know, her relationship just split up. And then she's just out here just dancing and dancing on, I mean, and some of these things, you know, and it's just, and you've got a kid, you know, um, I don't know. It just, uh, so, um, you know, and I've talked, I mean, she doesn't live super far from me. I've talked to her and stuff. I've talked to her a lot and I feel like it's like watching somebody just, spiraling and then it's just so crazy how these people come on and be like talk about their diagnoses it's like you can't just use don't don't just use your diagnoses as an excuse for your behavior that's that's childish you know are we adults <laughs> after we're just having this whole talk about adults but uh adults i'm talking in the sense of not like you know, putting on your dad's suit and tie and going out to work to be successful. I'm talking about an emotional maturity, you know, to act like you have some experience in life. Oh, she's stiff. Like My joints are fucking killing me. It's weird. Hold on. routine this is how the whole day will go um okay let me think what i was talking about <sighs> uh, she's gonna completely distract me it was so weird yesterday how long that took to download i couldn't believe it i kept watching it and watching it and watching it because i had unplugged uh you know i had set my phone off away and i'll just put it like right next to the modem and so let it just sit there and download. It will go on to YouTube and so I'll just let it just do that action. And so then it would be like, oh my God, it's just barely moving, barely moving. I was like, this is so weird. I mean, I've done over two hours before and I was trying to think like, um, I know there was another day it took all day to download. I kept trying to think like, was it the same time of the month? Is it like a uh, same day of the week like I don't I have no idea confirmation <laughs> I have no idea it's confirmation but I have no idea I, I should truly have no idea but um the um anyways I have no idea why it took so long and I don't know yeah I mean it could be that it even is not downloading when people are trying to watch but whatever it was I kept thinking man what did I say are they trying to hold it back was I saying something I'm not allowed to say? And that is another thing, too, through all this stuff. Is, you know, what part is censorship going to truly be lifted? Where we can, like, it's such a, a conversation on TikTok. And it's just so wacky. How many people don't see, like, well, it's Chinese. Okay, but the goal, do you know who's censoring us? Well, the American government, no. <laughs> Uh, it's just like 
you know, just, it's just exhausting in that world. It's just exhausting. I mean, how do you go around and have conversations with people who don't see anything? They don't pay any attention. It's just like, well, the newspaper said, I read it last night. I saw it on the news this morning. It's like, oh my God. Uh, yeah, but what is, uh, and at this point too, it's just so deep in, like, fuck. Like, I, trying to explain to people about the money thing at this point is like, I explain to them about any of this stuff. It's like, uh, you know, you just got to write it out at this point. You're just going to have to see it play out. You know, whatever your experience is, is what you came into experience. So, you know, it's going to be scary to you. It's meant to be scary to you. It is, um, it, it kind of, I kind of feel like a creep sometimes, seriously. I feel like some sort of fucking machine or something. It's weird. And I don't, sometimes I don't even understand myself. But I can watch some of these horrible disasters. I like on some of this footage. And you can even hear people screaming and stuff. But it is like, it's like I just know all this has to happen. It all has to happen. Like, it's like, I don't know. It's weird. It's like, I feel like I'm a god way up here over the top. Well, it has to happen. I don't know. It's so creepy. It feels so cut off from everything. It's weird. That is another thing that is weird about, you know, the more you get into the spiritual side of things, the more you see, like, these these storylines are this is this is all spiritual these are all like storylines these are all opportunities these are all you know our souls stories it's all just experiences it's just a bunch of experiences and uh, we all get to have them but you know there is there's a difference in going and having an experience and enjoying it and getting everything out of it and then going and having an experience that you don't even know you're having one that is like the awakening is to realize you're in an experience you're in a, an opportunity to learn and to grow this isn't an accident nothing is by accident and you are here for a, a purpose that you are eternal. You know, you're so much more than what they would have you to believe you are. And um, it, it was just the whole thing is, is because of where we're at in this state of evolution on uh, the planet. So will you stop, please? start having a fit oh my god she is so good i was thinking about this yesterday too having a big giant dog that is bossy oh lord okay you're not having another treat no that is that is nonsense go lay down I told you she does that. I told you. She goes and rings those motherfucking bells and then she just goes and wants a treat over and over and over. Stop it. God, you are so bossy. She's acting so weird like what do. But I, you know, I was thinking about that yesterday. Like getting a, a big dog that is so bossy. That is definitely, you know, only certain personality traits. I, I was thinking there's just a bunch of things like that she does and stuff that are challenging, super duper challenging. <laughs> this face, how can you, how can you not love this face? I swear, look at that. Look, look up here. Look at that. Show us pretty face. And um, uh, but I was thinking, you know, there's specific challenges to having a big dog. When we went for our second walk. She'll have a fit until she gets to go. And it keeps pouring and pouring. She literally lays on the porch and moans and groans and cries. It's it's embarrassing. 
I feel like people think that I'm just forced. And everybody, I swear to God, I think people, I, I can hear you fart. I swear to God. This is, I, and we're not even that close to each other. But you go outside and it's like you hear everything out there. It's trippy. And so... Um, I always think that people think I'm just making her just lay on the porch. I won't let her in. And she's just laying out there crying about it. It's like, she's so fucking dramatic. She's not forced out there. Uh, but, um, she just yanks me and she just pulls me when she wants to go do something. And she just doesn't listen. Like she'll listen real good until she, it's a battle of the wills. And it's like, nope, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> the other day she did it again. She was like, I've. She even looks like, uh, <laughs> it's so funny looking, uh, how oh, she's so big and she's so muscular and she is uh, in her harness. She's got one of those, um, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of a horse saddle, uh, her harness. And, um, but she, when she was going, what are those things that pull in Alaska and the person's back here and the, the sled dogs, that's what she looked like a sled dog. And she was pulling so hard and it looked like she was even pulling in the snow. She was pulling so hard trying to go because we were walking and she saw some people up there the one day where it was just like, oh my God, this person, this person. Oh. And she wants to go interact with everybody. And so she's uh, pulling me. I'm pulling back as hard as I can with all my weight trying to pull back. And there's just no way. There's no way. And, um, and how hard she was pulling and pulling. And we were going. We were going. I wasn't stopping us at all. We were going and going and going. We got all the way up there. You know, she had to interact with all these people and the dog. And everybody always freaks out. This big giant ass dog with his giant ass mouth is coming barreling towards them. But all she wants to do is run up and sniff everybody. And she always has to bark. She always has to bark out. And I think because she's so loud, people always think it's super aggressive. She just is so excited about, she just wants to talk and she just wants to interact with people. And, um, uh, but people always get so scared, scared of her. And, um, and she's the one who's always getting attacked. She goes running up like that. These dogs get scared of her and she gets attacked all the time. And she's never, ever bit any dog back. She's never done anything aggressive towards any dog or any person ever. Except the one guy, she does bark at him viciously. But I swear to God, I just feel so certain about this uh, BB gun in her butt. I feel so certain that she, he shot her in the butt. And, um, and the way she barks at him and the way he keeps coming out and wanting to talk to her all the time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's extreme. It's like, dude, come on. And, um, and it's like, uh, I don't know. You feel guilty about something, you know? Yeah, she's one thing when she's in her fence and barking at you and you're not going to put up with that. The thing you see her out here, you know, and she's just full of personality. She's the sweetest thing in the whole world. Just people are always scared of her. Cause she's so big it's weird because i don't see her as being so big but then i grew up with saint bernard's so i like big dogs and i'm not a fan of small dogs small dogs they just get under your feet always tripping like especially it's my vision um got fucked with the brain injury thing i can't there's parts that i don't see and um small because I go around small dogs too to other people's houses and I don't see them and so I was like oh my god well I've I've before gotten up and not seen Stella under me <laughs> she's huge so a little small dog would probably get stomped by me trampled I've always got to be looking down especially my mom she's got all these small dogs so I've always got to be looking down and making sure <laughs> I'm not stepping on anything uh, so um but there is the challenges that come with a big dog have its own things, you know? So I was like, you know, we've all got our own personality disorders. And they're all kind of come out in different ways. Mine, one of the ways is I have a big giant dog that bosses me around. <laughs> but, um, you know, she does shut the fuck up. I mean, she's not like abusive. She uh, does stop when she, she just has a certain point when she gets excited, 
And she just doesn't care about anything except what she wants. She goes running. She's yanked a leash right on my hand to go running up. And she just got to see her little boyfriend next door. She's boy crazy. She's definitely boy crazy. And the neighbors uh, the other day came out because we were walking. And her little boy dog saw Stella. He goes tearing out the thing as fast as he can to go run out and bark at her. And so she came out and was chatting and I was saying, oh my God, Stella is like that girl who just has to keep going and driving by his house. It's like every day, she's got to go out a couple times on these walks and then we got to go up and she just sits there. We got to stop at his gate and she'll just sit there and stare stare and see if she sees him in there and she just then goes around to the other side it's like girl she is so lovesick and, and I think and, you know one thing too is that she's lonely because there's a lot of we go um she's got another boyfriend at my daughter's house that she really really loves Enzo and he's a great big dog he's really tall he's skinny real skinny not like her she's beefy but he's skinny, like a, I don't know, one of those wolf, hound, husky looking dogs. And, um, oh my God, she's, oh, she really likes that one. But they're like eye to eye. And I think that's a special relationship. She doesn't get that very often. She's always having to look down and get down low. <laughs> so that's a lot of talk about Stella's love life. Um, and, uh, you know, there is, um, let me think if there was something off those videos. I wanted to see. Um, oh, because that one. Yeah, that one about uh, the guy. is The one he was saying this morning, it was a girl. And, you know, a lot of times these girls, it's like, I don't know. It's like these, these girls are cute. All these girls are cute. But they all don't think they're cute. So, because they don't look like Kim Kardashian or whatever. So, then they just think, like, they're ugly, they're homely. So, they don't try and um, go in that direction. They go, like, the other direction. You know, well, like, they don't really care about... I mean, you have, like, there's extreme, there's, like, two different kinds of extremes, but then there's, like, everything in between, but then you have the ones, so you have the ones that just are, like, don't care, they're not going to put in any work or effort on themselves, because they're just not attractive, so what's the point, and then you have these other ones that just go so over the top with the, you know, mermaid hair, and the, and so many with the extensions, like, and then they're coloring the shit out of their hair and putting extensions in, which extensions is damaging to your hair too. And then the coloring damages all of their follicles and all of their um, stuff with their hair. And so, you know, then it becomes like they rely, have to rely on the fake hair because they're damaging their other hair so much by all the things they're doing to their hair. So, and, and then they get so loaded up on so much different makeup, which now it's all coming out how toxic makeup is and how it influences your hormones and all sorts of weird shit. And it's all on purpose too, of course. And, um, all the confirmation, all these people, uh, you know, who load all that stuff on their face. But the thing that always gets me is the masking part of it the hiding themselves part of it, the, like, why are you putting out this other face? You know, why are, it's a creation of a, a secondary face on top of your face. And, but it's this competition over who can make a better mask, you know, because the makeup industry, like that whole group, which in, 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 um, in also encompasses a lot of men too, because there's a lot of men, but Jeffree Star, who's one of them, he just came out and um, what was it? He came out and was exposing some stuff the other day. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, oh, so Jeffree, because I wasn't, you know, not, not a makeup person. So I wasn't ever into that, but I've had four daughters, so I've 
and a bunch of granddaughters, so I definitely know a little bit about the makeup stuff. Like, they go, they all got really into it. I don't remember what year it was where it started being just this huge push up on makeup. And there's all these videos all on YouTube, how to makeup tutorials, all of this contouring and all of that stuff where it got to the point where this is stage makeup. This is like special effects makeup. Like this isn't daily routine makeup. Like this is extreme. Like I don't know what year that was that that happened. But then all these girls just all started changing their faces into this extreme makeup look. Like they're going to narrow their nose. They're going to create cheekbones. They're going to extend their eyes and give themselves more lashes. Puff up their lips. You know, all these different things. You know, it's just changing their face. There just was one... Um, who just changed their face? Uh, her mom is Lisa Bonet. And her dad is um, uh, that singer guy. Um, Lenny Kravitz. That's what it is. Lenny Kravitz. And then their daughter is Zoe. I think her name is Zoe. And... Um, so she just went and got a bunch of surgery done to her face. And so, uh, I don't know, she, these people breaking it down or whatever. It looked like she has a new chin. So she put in a new chin. Then, uh, I don't know, she did something, some stuff to her cheeks. And, you know, I know I had very full cheeks. <laughs> so, I and I don't know how full her cheeks were, but... It seems that they, when you see the before and after, it was like, I mean, her cheeks were fuller, but so she's whatever. And they are saying like, it's called like a buckle removal, which I don't know what the fuck. Are they going in and removing muscles out of people's faces to make it look smaller? And I'm not sure what, because you can't suck the fat out of it. I mean, it's like solid. <laughs> it's like, it's like a chunk. Like you'd have to scrape it out. Like, I don't know. But whatever they're doing to people to put it in artificially, like, I don't know if they're putting in some kind of implant things or they're just putting a bunch of stuff. And then, I don't know what a buckle remover is. Buckle remove is, uh, I know what a chin implant is. And you can see she's got like a long pointed chin now. Um, but it's just as sad because this person was saying like, you know, I mean, especially Zoe was so pretty and Zoe Kravitz and she's so pretty and, um, you know, why would she do this to her face? But I guess in the media was constantly comparing her to her good looking parents and, you know, and I, I know it's hard for young girls, you know, to have really pretty moms. And to constantly, like for me, my my mom was super, super pretty. And she looked very different than me. And all the time, I would always be told, you look just like your dad. You look just like your dad. And I would always feel like, you know, I must be, like I look like a man. And I'm, plus I was tall and skinny and I didn't have girl shape. And I was like, oh my God. I really seriously thought I was... That there's something was wrong with me. <laughs> like I'm not kidding about it. I really did. <laughs> and um, so uh, you know, I totally, totally can relate to that whole thing of being a young girl and having people constantly like your mom's so pretty, your mom's so pretty, and uh, you know that is hard. And I, you know, my girls will turn around and say that that's what happened to them. So it's. It just happens, you know, like uh, to people just as a part of the uh, experience. And you can kind of see, you know, it creates insecurities. And then this place, of course, offers solutions <laughs> to our insecurities that aren't good for us. And uh, so, um, you know, going and changing your face uh, surgically 
so that you can try and look better. There's always a downside to it. And this person who was doing this video talking about how sad it was, was like, what is going to happen to all these movie stars that keep going and doing all of this stuff to their face as they age? Like, what is going to happen? Like, if you're getting buckle fat removed or something, that's where she was saying it. Like, what happens is your face ages when you don't have that fat anymore. Like, I have a lot. I don't know how long it will take. I know as you, as you get older, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Uh, well, I mean, we're not going to keep getting older, so it doesn't fucking matter. That's one thing, too, with the Nasara thing, if you go listen to those people. The med beds are going up everywhere. There's a whole uh, thing that's coming out about how to detox from all of the different things. So there's all of that stuff that's going to be coming out of uh, remedies or something. And um, I think they've been working on some. And so there's going to be that's going to come out and the med beds and stuff. So all that is supposed to be coming real quick too. And see, that's another good thing. I would be really cool if all of this, you know, the awakening would turn suddenly and be all good things, <laughs> all good, happy things. Like what? What's happening in the world? And that would be cool. I hope, I hope that is the thing that happens. That all of a sudden, just good stuff starts happening for us all. And we're all like, that's shocking. What's going on? Well, we were upside down for a long time, but now we're right side up and now things are going to go better. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, it is true. Like if they are in putting plastic things in their faces and, and, uh, and all these chemicals and stuff, there has been a couple of people who had gotten, uh, cause I think that they start getting those, uh, facelifts way too young book. I couldn't believe when Daryl Hannah got one. God, I swear to God, I think she was like 30 years old or something when she got one. It was wacky. And then she didn't really keep going. It was like right after Splash, uh, it seemed like she was popular for a bit. And then she got a facelift. And then it seemed like she wasn't in a bunch of stuff. Same with Jennifer Grey when she did her face, did surgery on hers. Yeah, you know, a lot of these people... When they go and do them. And then Madonna. Like her face just gets weirder and weirder. And then she just goes and loads it up more. But who knows. She could be fucking Madonna 10.0 at this point. And who knows how many clones she's gone through. Like there's something weird about her. She is so mindless. And then there's so much with um, uh, this is Oprah and Rock stuff. Like everything they, they keep bringing on to this day, you just be, be just sit back and be ready. Like, oh, this is like I I knew every single thing that keeps coming is just to show the corruption. So this is going to show uh, so much corruption. <laughs> the, the, the ten million dollars just disappeared. <laughs> the rocks are like, oh, now he's got a, now he's all ethical about it. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, here's this is gonna be this is gonna get so disgusting because they found those kids like they've got these kids or sell. Oh, this is gonna get gross. This is there's so much grossness in this place that you know we have to see. We have to see what the truth is. You know, well, I mean, we turned a blind eye. This stuff happened because you know it is. Um, it's like we became egocentric. We became so self-involved and wounded. Oh, yeah, that girl. Okay, so the video that the guy did, the girl, the stitch. So, you know, she just looks, you know, like a regular girl. But you can tell she's a girl who doesn't care about herself. She's not trying to, you know, look attractive or anything like that. She's got an unattractive haircut. Very unattractive, like... um. It was a lot of people, a lot of people have very unattractive haircuts. It's like they do it on purpose. Like they are trying to look unattractive. Like, well, I don't look like Kim Kardashian, so I'm just going to look horrible. It's like, yeah, but you look like you. You want to look horrible or you want to look like the nice version of you? You get a pick, you know? You want the version of you that is trying or the version of you that's feeling sorry for yourself? One or the other. Because you're putting out there the one that you look like you're feeling sorry for yourself. And so she, um, 
but her whole video, this fucking dramatic thing about her going to the physical therapist and the physical therapist did not do their pronouns and uh, they want to be called they them and that they are not being respected and then they wanted them to turn tur turn their head and push their head down towards their boobs which was triggering to them because it was over sexualizing this part of them that they don't acknowledge or something like they pretend like they don't have boobs until she told her to put her face down or something i don't know it was whacked and then um so she began to softly cry <laughs> not shitting you she was saying this i so i began to softly cry in silence i laid there crying and then it just got louder until I had to just get up and run out of the place or something. It was like this weird, ridiculous story of like, you should not be letting people hurt your feelings. Like you, how can you not see? You are just handing everybody the thing. Here, please. Uh, you know, if you don't call me this, it's going to hurt my feelings. Why? Why in the world would you hand your feelings over to all these different people and expect them to acknowledge them in the way that you want them acknowledged? You are putting it out there to set yourself up for having your feelings hurt. It's not like you have to be cold and rigid and hold yourself in tight and, you know, but you don't just, uh, well, I'm going to help let my feelings are going to be very hurt if you don't acknowledge me as a they, them. Like, you know. I mean, it's it's not surprising that this is a bunch of young people who are coming up with this. They don't have a lot of life experience. That a lot of their growing time has even been in some sort of, you know, lockdown or controlled kind of uh, world. It's not like they haven't really gone out and really experienced. Like Jesus Christ, you should not be getting your feelings hurt over shit like that. That's what goddamn grade school is for like get over like I, I mean my mom wasn't the greatest but she did like sticks and stones remember that one doesn't matter what people say people can say whatever they want doesn't matter you don't let people's words hurt you you know you got to toughen up and so these people are so fucking fragile and they act like the world is ending because Somebody didn't misgendered them. There's so much of that stuff going on right now because it's so much about, you know, coming to the surface and exploding in our faces. And it's just so absurd. And, um, and the, but the guy who was doing the stitch was making good points because he was like, they and them isn't even real. You're one person. You're a he or you're a she. You're not a they or a them. And so it doesn't, you, and you want people to go around and pretend. And then how in the world would all the people know, like, who you're offending if you call them a he, a she, a they, a them? Like, it's not our, uh, you, you want your pronouns to be acknowledged so much. Put them on a shirt. Walk around. Everyone refer to me as they, them, please. Like, and then if you're going to get mad because then, you know, maybe you're judgmental because that person doesn't read. Maybe they're autistic. Maybe they can't uh, see that part. Maybe they've got other things on their minds. Maybe they've got their own issues. Maybe they've got problems. Maybe somebody they know just died and they don't give a fuck about what you want to be called. Like uh, these people who just want to go out and just make it all, you know, that this needs to be our number one priority. It's like, it's not though. It is, you know, a child's priority. A child that has got nothing else to think about except for what people are saying to them, what people are calling them. It's a pointless energy. Uh, uh, it's like throwing your energy away. It doesn't make any sense. So, but that's for them to figure out. Like, you're, you're just putting yourself out there so that everybody can beat you down just like this video oh how is she gonna take this one this is gonna be the biggest bullying situation in her whole life and then all the people who follow her who are all about that 
they're all going to be just, can you believe it? I can't believe how he said that. We shouldn't be able to say we're they's and them's and all that shit. It's like, you guys have got to hear the other side. You got to just not get all stuck in your own little group and be sure that you're so right. You got to hear what other people think and say, but it's just, it's so aggressive right now. And it's also another weird thing too. It's like, there's people who have accounts that are, you know, pretty big. And, um, so they feel like that they just have to make a video because there's way too much nonsense videos. They're just nonsense. It's just like no point. I don't understand. Like, because you're lip syncing and you're getting all like, it's really you singing. Like, what, what is the, what is the point of that? I mean, maybe I am just way too, uh, I don't know. It just seems so pointless. It, it seems like an energy being purged out of just this shallow desperation for attention. Just somebody, you know, pay attention to me. And somebody's not looking at me for five minutes. Hurry, everybody get back over here and look at me again. And um, so it's just like on, to, on the social media right now just seems very, very toxic. And there is, a, you know, a definite repetition in information because as people wake up and then they start sharing information, it's like, bug, seeing this information for years. This has been going for years now. <laughs> like, oh God, I can't wait until I just hope to God this is our weekend of, um, but I, I, you know, I mean, it can be dramatic, but it can go in a positive thing to flip that would be really cool it would be really cool because we're flipping into the positive so it'd be cool if they used a positive to flip us in and so giving us the money first and coming at it from that direction I would think it would reduce some anger and stuff but I think the biggest thing where people are going to get super angry is the medical over um, them making people sick and killing their families and shit. That's what's going to be the hardest. So we still have that whole part to go through. And I think that's why so many places are closing down and stuff. Because the lawsuits are going to be so extreme. But there's not going to be really anybody to sue. Uh, but all, you got to keep in mind though. All their shit. All their things. Like they keep talking about all Oprah's property. And all you know her money and stuff. Which... You know, did she ever give back to her community? From the moment she started getting rich, did she ever give back to anyone in her community? I'd be curious to know about that. Because I don't think she ever did anything to give back to any in her community. And I don't know where. I, it seems like she was supposedly from Chicago too, but I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I think she just... I, it seems like it was part of her deal, you know, you can have uh, power and stuff, but you, you know, you're going to play like the madam. Like she has a skeezy role. She's very skeezy. And so, <clears throat> but that's that shallow side of us, you know, take a total skeezer and dress them up and, and, and then tell them that they're, they're the ones telling us how we need to pay. They're, they're the moral compass for us. It's like they have no morals. So the, um, but she, all that property and all of her property and all these different places, what they're talking about, that's all going to be confiscated land. The whole thing is, is that we also have this issue with, um, the planet changing these cosmic changes on the landscape. And so a lot of these places are going to be gone where they have land anyways. Like California is going to be underwater. All these places where it's really expensive land are going to be underwater. And so then it's going to be all new places. But they also have all those billionaires that were buying up all of that land that was the um, doomsday map. They were buying all that up. But all that will be confiscated and will go back to the people. And so... I, I still think that people are going to go out and, you know, have their own space 
there, there's going to be tons of communities that are going to build up. And, um, but I just, I don't know how it will go with the food thing and stuff anymore. And even with the medicine and stuff, like, I don't know. We just got to see as, as things, um, evolve, you know, if we go into this whole thing of like eating still, in needing any herbs like if we have a med bed and we are in high vibration and we're healthy like i don't know this is it seems like it's a part of our learning but it doesn't seem like it would be a part of our future because it just doesn't make sense because this whole thing of it all coming to this the surface about this hologram existence so you know I mean, we don't feed our pictures, so why would we need to feed this one? So, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see, because I think, you know, probably a part of us needing to eat and stuff was this low vibration we were in. It was very low vibration, low density. We were told certain things. So, I, I don't know. We'll just, we'll just, you know, go see how it goes. But whatever it's going to, however it's going to go, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Like our travel is going to be so much better. Our health, our relationships, how we live, our lifestyles. It's going to be all huge improvements. So if it is, you know, if they do do the money thing as being the thing. But that would be where they're going to fight. Is that they just want to keep fighting to make the money thing to try and I mean they can't stop it you know it's I don't know I don't know because how is it that they have all these people arrested but that they can keep on attacking us so I don't know but they're not going to turn around and attack us and pretend like the other ones did I don't know it's a very you know it's curious like how are, are some bad guys left out there just to do this stuff and there's so much bad stuff going uh, and it's just like what I was seeing, too. These uh, instigator people are just put all over the place to just do, you know, home invasions and, uh, you know, uh, sexual assaults and all this stuff. Just constant crime. Get get it, get the uh, get the group going and running in stores and stealing things and stuff. And so um, and it's going to get more violent and more vicious. It's going to get, you know, way worse. I feel bad for all the people in the inner cities, but that's their roles. They came here for that experience. They came to go through that. And who knows what lives that they are trying to, you know, clean up or go full circle or, you know, because it's all these, these lifetime after lifetimes that are all like closing up, closing cycles where where you are learning with these groups of people and so different open-ended lifetimes you know it's like cycles closing like these crazy outlandish stories like you know this parents who are prostituting their seven-year-old and who knows how long it's been going where it's going to you know come to and you know these are um there's just so much, the stories are so much deeper, you know, are so much deeper than just this, you know, it's just the, the soul's stories in these other lifetimes and these things and everything that is going, it, it, there's so much bigger story. There's so much bigger picture. There's so much more to it, you know, than what we see. We get caught up in that little a little tiny bit of it and it's just it's vast and so and it's you know so many lifetimes and our relationships are so much more connected than what people even realize like like we are linked like we are all connected like our there's a reason why when we go out you know, or we're around each other, our energies start merging in and stuff. Like we are all really connected. And this is to give us the illusion that we're not connected. 
so that we can have the illusion of separation so that we can begin to experience ourselves as ourselves so we can identify and understand our own being is it is our own consciousness not a part of the entirety so sometimes i don't even know what the fuck i'm talking about it's like trips me out because i can see it i can see like what um the stuff uh but you know like i said the even on all of the visuals and stuff you are still translating and how you see something at one time may change how you see it later. Like you can see it one way at a certain time. And then, you know, your your vision evolves and then it makes more sense to you in, an, in another way or something. So it is, uh, there is always that evolution and understanding in the communication to me. Um, um, because there are things like, or they had been telling me something and telling me something and telling me something. And and then there would be times where, you know, I thought I understood. And then all of a sudden, they would tell me something else. be like, oh, now I totally get what you're saying. It, so it's just, a, but it's weird. Because it can be the same information, but you just, it absorbs differently. Because now you have more information. So there's more receptors for you to receive the information so it makes more sense so um anyways that you know that's my advice on that one is uh keep opening your mind and creating receptors so that you can receive more information and understand it so you don't have the same limitations so that you you have a broader understanding of things so anyways um i'm gonna do this one and see, I don't know how long this one will take to download. Let's see what time it is. 5.08. Um, so, I'll, I'll start it. I always start it as soon as I stop. So, yesterday it probably was starting around the same time. Well, no, because it would have been like another half hour maybe. So, it would probably been 5.30 or something around when I started it. Maybe right before 6. So, anyways, I thought it was going to be on by 8.30. I even thought maybe it would be on by 7.30. Because the day before one went on, it seemed like they were going on faster and faster and faster. Which, to me, it will be like, okay, maybe something, you know, things are starting to go better in our direction. I'm always watching when things are shifting in our direction. <laughs> That's what I'm, like, holding on to. <laughs> is uh, for things to go in our direction. And uh, so, that's what I'm always watching for is this this change in, in in direction i don't know you can just you can see things by watching people like you can see like how people are reacting and acting what they're talking about and stuff it's like a gauge to read where we're at in the awakening you know and it all has to do with this turning this turning of events, you know, turning the other direction. But if it is that the money thing goes down and then uh, Trump steps in, you know, because, I mean, they're making so much drama around him to removing Trump off the Trump Tower, <laughs> taking away his licensing and all this stuff. <clears throat> and I swear, I think he, there was something about he was headed over to Arizona. And there was this whole thing about Joe keeps going to Arizona. Like, there's going to be something big like they want us to all be paying attention to Arizona and it, all with the border and stuff it's all going to have to do with a lot of stuff oh and maybe this was a channeler because I've seen this lady before I don't know who she is but I've recognized her face but the way that she was talking and what she said made me think oh I bet she's a channeler or a medium or something but um she said, oh, so you want to know what they do with all those organs? <laughs> it's like, yeah, matter of fact, I do. <laughs> I think I mentioned that a few times. And um, she says, um, they're, they're eating them. Yeah. yeah they're, it, that's what they, they don't just need the blood to survive. They have to have the organ. She was going through this whole thing about the organ meat and stuff like that. And, um. But the flesh is the dead part. The dead part. The, the organs and the blood are the living part. It's alive. 
so they consume the living part so that they can extend their life and they um but the flesh is the dead part it's the dead decaying part and that's why they grind it up and feed it to us and you know what um she was saying all ground meat for a long time and i was just like oh my god when they came up with ground turkey <laughs> i really ate a lot of ground turkey so i probably wasn't turkeys i used to question all the time how are they doing this with turkeys oh, damn should question a little bit deeper kelly should have known it was the soil and green they were already in on it. So they were already feeding us the dead, decaying. Because they got to do something with all the leftovers. All they need is certain parts. And if they, if we knew how much, like there's something in Ohio right now coming out, because this is all, everything coming to the surface. Like a thousand kids this year have gone missing. And so all these questions, the news is questioned, where, where are all these kids going? There's been like 50 just this month alone. Like what's going on? Where are all the kids going? And it's like from Cleveland, Ohio or something. And it's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a horrible time to be a parent whose kid's going. A horrible time to be a, anybody who anybody who goes missing is because of what is going to come out. Uh, the, so the taking. And, and she also explained something about uh, the adrenalized. Uh, you know, when you do that to get the blood, but that's a separate kind of thing. Like they're, they're getting, uh, it's like they're getting the good part of the chemical from those two things. But the trauma goes into the flesh, which becomes decay, rot and stuff. And that's why they feed it to us is to get us into that decay, rot, stagnation, sickness, while they take the energetic part that is, I mean, I, I swear to God, I think some of these are relics. Like, I'm telling you, of fucking Rockefellers. I bet you that we're going to find out a lot of them have been around for fucking centuries. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of these, a lot of these people probably turned into smoke when they fucking died like a vampire. Is they are so fucking old, but... You know, I kept questioning, questioning, like, what in the hell are they doing? With, like, why would they need this many? Even to come up with, like, a whole new, uh, uh, well, they didn't come up with it on that. That was to use it on an ethical thing. Well, brain dead. The, the babies didn't know what was happening. It was because we're cutting parts out of them. They're brain dead. It's like brain dead doesn't even exist. So, uh, they're just coming up with that and then they start using it on on all these different ones so that they can take those things so that they can all fucking consume them Ugh. god i told you this is a this is this place is sickening it's so sick it's full of sickos i don't know that's so cannibalistic you know you gotta take but it's on all different levels because i mean people rely on um, animals and plants they're all taking something else's energy they're all using something else's energy to sustain their own life to uh to re re um I hear my stomach just keeps growling and growling i'm always like is it the parasites or is it me i don't even fucking know anymore my head's so fucked on these parasites um but anyways, whatever the hell I was going to say, I just got to stop talking. <laughs> I'm just gonna... So anyways, have a good day and, you know, just just see all the good things because good things are happening. Even though they want us to keep feeling like it's the end, it's the end. There's so much good things happening. Things are moving forward and don't, I still say, don't be super scared about the cataclysm thing. I really feel like, that they are, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to leave. But it's going to be from uh, some other things. Like there's, like, we keep having these disasters. That will take out some people. But a lot of people, they'll leave by their own hands or family members. Like there's going to be a lot of stuff. 
that is going to go on but the the cataclysm and stuff like even if there's one big earthquake and a whole bunch of people die in california then there are tons of people will all will leave they'll all start leaving from there and then we'll, I think they'll start getting people into safer places so that the cataclysms will happen, but it won't have the same effects as if we're living there. So I, I think that's, you know, they're going to, that's a part of what will go on when it starts going in that positive direction. Right now, we're just out there, you know, whatever is happening, we're just, you know, victims to the storm. We're like unsheltered in the storm. But the other energy that wants to come in is to shelter and protect us. The other energy that we're fighting against, they want to strip us of all protection, of all shelter. They want us to be exposed, but they are the ones who will be exposed. And we will become the ones who are sheltered, but sheltered out of protection, like a universal protection. That will, um, and it will all happen naturally on like a micro macro, but it will all lead us towards, you know, this changing of uh, where we live. I think there's going to be a lot of changes in where people live, a lot of towns building up where people hadn't thought about living before, and they're going to turn it into really beautiful places. I think there's so many beautiful places that people don't even know because they've uh, if they've ever left their area they flew out and didn't just go out and just drive in all the different places around the planet around um America even or Canada wherever there's a lot of places and people don't go out and just go and see like I think that was the thing I thought was cool in Europe because a lot of Europeans do go out when you go you're in a completely different country be like you leave um Washington State, you go to California, you're in another country. You leave California, you go to Nevada, you're in another country. You leave Nevada, you go to uh, Oklahoma, you're in another country. It's just all, all what we think of as states, they have as separate countries. That's why they have a separation also in, in who they are in being able to understand themselves for their culture from where they're from and who, who what they are a connection to and that's what you know they tried to make sure that we didn't have in America they didn't want us to have connection they didn't want us to know who we were they wanted to build it themselves and it was such a shallow superficial construction it was um you know, it had a lot of holes in it. <laughs> so anyways, I was talk and talk and talk. Look at that. It's another 10 minutes or something of me saying goodbye. Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.